This is Critical Nonsense, our high lowbrow show about culture, science, and tech. This week, Joey talks to me in serious, heavy, nerddom terms about the future of controlling our information. Actually, this is what a Joey sounds like. (laughs) And this is what an executive producer and shepherd of the future minds of America, Jess Vander, sounds like. Hi, this is Jess. Wow. High praise. Thank you. I was like a shepherd's pie. (laughs) I'll take shepherd's pie also. (laughs) Do you want to tell them why I said that, what you're doing right now? Yeah, yeah, so this, uh, I, I'm super fortunate that at Sylvain, we get VTO in addition to PTO, VTO standing for uh, volunteer time off. And each year for the last, goodness, uh, eight years or so, I've been uh, volunteering as an event supervisor for the MIT Science Olympiad Invitational Tournament, which maybe is the (laughs) nerdiest compilation of words I can conjure up. Um, But back in middle school and high school, I was a competitor in Science Olympiad, which is this competition of all different types of disciplines of science. And um, as an alum and a a huge fan of the program, I continue to support it. So um, I'm stepping in to record this with Joey right now, but afterwards I'm going to be making a bunch of spreadsheets to help figure out who won this thing. Literally a nerd herder. Yeah, it's it's quite literally nerd herding right now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I love it. I'm glad that you do it. Just, you know, housekeeping, rate, review, subscribe. We're on all the podcast platforms, but also on YouTube for any um, hearing impaired folks to get the closed captioning if that's a a thing you're interested in or need or know someone who might. Um, There's one other thing I wanted to bring up is housekeeping, but I've forgotten it. That's (laughs) it's already clean. Who Who, who knows? Yeah, we'll find it later underneath something we put on top of that thought. The thing thing I wanted to bring up is, you know, if you have any questions, topics you're interested in hearing us discuss, anything like that, you can reach us at criticalnonsense at sylvain dot co, the email address, or at thisisnonsense dot com has a little applet where you can submit questions. We're always interested if if anyone has any interesting ideas or things that they'd like us to discuss. That was the thing I wanted to talk about. That's great. Okay. I have a topic. Tell me. And it, it's not coming from the prognostication that I had made last week around crypto, Web3, Metaverse, oh, all of that. No, but are you trapping me in a crypto conversation again? No, no, I'm not. It, it's adjacent, <laughs> though. Um, I've been listening to, I've been on like a um, Neil Stevenson spree of listening to audiobooks lately. And I, you know, I hadn't listened in a few years and he had like two or three books come out. And so I've been going through a few of them. Um, And so it has me in that like hard sci fi speculative fiction (laughs) headspace. And I've been listening to one that I'm not finished yet and I won't you know, present any spoilers, but there's one called Fall that is um, sort of oriented around the internet and sort of the propagation of falsehoods and, you know, kind of taking the circumstances. I'm assuming it was written post, um, you know, the 2016 election in the U.S. where there was, you know, a, a big propagation of false information and things Mm -hmm. like that. Um, And it sort of presents this situation in which as people we're almost um, incapable of contending with the internet and social media, right? That, that we are sort of like passive victims to it. I mean, I'm really enjoying the book so far. So it's not, it's not about that. This is a good thing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like that is like a bit of a conceit that is carried uh, forward into it. Like any falsehood presented into the world is just going to 
propagate on the internet and and a lot of like weird shit ensues but between that and you know a lot of the conversations coming out of the back of um blizzard uh activision blizzard being purchased by microsoft and some of the conversations about the metaverse that that has amplified more into the mainstream than just the nerd yeah. kind of corners of the internet I which, by the way, ask, there was a daily yes. episode about the metaverse, which is how yeah, I exactly. know any modicum about it. That's mass. <laughs> yeah, that's mass. Uh, that's, that's sort of left-leaning mass media. Um, but the, the question for you is, are we actually passive victims to social media, or do you see a future where we have some modicum of control. I don't know. This isn't an open-ended question, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You have to choose one of these two options. Either we're totally at the whims of the internet or totally not at the whims of the internet. Yeah, we're, we're somewhere in, in the middle, but definitely worse right now, I think. Like, mm -hmm. haven't figured out how to rein in more control, though I think that is possible. And this is one of the things on the podcast, The Daily from The New York Times, uh, where they're talking about, like, how even the concept of the metaverse, which is basically like, what if you have a totally immersive way of interacting with the world, but it's all online? Like, they were like, that's basically where we are today or it's like not too far off and they give the example of peloton which is where you like plug into your internet bike and you you bike with a bunch of people from all over the place and it's like oh i could totally see how this next wave of internet development is maybe a second opportunity to reclaim some control or not like there is definitely mm -hmm. that th we we could be in a moment where um, it goes either way, depending on how it's like, oh, I've seen this pattern before or, or maybe not. Maybe it feels different enough where people are like, ooh, cool, a new thing. Uh-oh, I found myself in the same seat that I was in five years ago. Nah, just a different format. Yeah. I, I think like that, that idea of like the in quotes metaverse or sort of augmented reality sort of versions of things happens at a slow pace versus just like uh oh suddenly i woke up one day and i lived in the metaverse right it is sort of like an in, an interesting idea that was coming out of that conversation of like yeah you know you're already like on your phone all the time if you're playing video games you have avatars and you know we're living in twitch streams and things like that it's sort of like which version of you know do we wind up in the super sad true love story version of things do we wind up in the ready player one version of things right, like where, yeah. where does it ultimately go i think the the aspect of it that i'm curious about is just this idea of like and it fits sort of in in like richard dawkins version of memetics of of information sort of being inherently viral right like that information spreads and you know there's almost there's almost a version of this where and i've heard this talked about loosely again i'm not an i'm not an expert on the subject area i'm just sort of like presenting ideas but there's there have been people who've talked about versions of web three which i like cringe saying just now, what because is of, of what web three is sort of like i think what people view as like the next wave of the internet right like the in in the way that we like demarcate generations of um you know people saying like millennials gen x gen z gen right, alpha but what whatever is it, what does it come with i guess yeah like yeah what are the trappings like, what, of that generation yeah, web one was very much like static websites, like links and hyperlinks and URLs and, and uh, HTML. Web two was sort of like 
the social internet, which we basically have, you know, been in for a long time. And so I think Web3, the idea is like we're on the precipice of a new internet and people don't necessarily know what it looks like. Is it decentralized? Is it like, and in, you know, are we using encoded ledgers? But like some of the things that people have talked about are the ability to better like track and control information and take some of that control out of the hands of of a very select few big tech companies and sort of like information control being a little bit more widely propagated, right? Like the idea of being able to maintain anonymity, but also being able to demonstrate um, origins of information on like a blockchain is like an interesting concept that may not actually present itself in web three, but like that is a version of things where like the virality of information right now we can't, because, you know, if something happens on Facebook, it is behind like the walled garden, so to speak. And Facebook knows where things originate from and is not like publicly accessible to anyone else. But, you know, a web three version of that, if, if I understand it correctly, let's give that caveat is, you know, the ledger of things entering into the internet is publicly accessible, even if you don't know when people are, um, or what person was doing it, like the, the sort of origin of when it enters onto a public ledger of information would be accessible. Um, and so, you know, it, it makes, part of the thing that I've been thinking about with regards to this is like, that virality of information and particularly false information, right? Like you can think about it a lot in the way that we talk about the pandemic now, right? Like we had this sort of, (laughs) this sort of pandemic of false information happening like a little before and then concurrent with the actual sort of COVID-19 pandemic. And I think it's presented us with a lot of information about like, how do you contain virality? And, you know, like the idea of sort of quarantining even false information is like an interesting idea. The question becomes, who's the arbiter of that information? Um, But like that idea of you are sort of a passive uh, object in space and you may be infected with false information makes me think of like, who's in control of that and like how do you yeah. inoculate yourself from those things or are you just like victim to the future dystopia of where like you know all information is fake or the torrent of fake information is greater than the torrent of true information yeah it might be harder to say for uh i i think it's it's more difficult to think about this for me in terms of like information that is being shared or communications and thoughts and things out in the world but i think a first step that does not feel scary to me is the step of personal information and the idea like this is a very analog way to describe this problem but like um i don't know if people reach out to you often to confirm your address before sending you something as though you could be moving constantly of just like, hey, I don't, I, I haven't sent you a letter in five years, but I'm going to double check because who knows where you could possibly be at any given moment. You have this like text exchange, which is strange because they're about to send you some form of mail in follow up to that. I promise this is related. But the concept of like, uh, for a while, Facebook was the place where you update your information as sort of like this baseline of, and then this is out in the world. And obviously before that there was yellow pages, like some formal baseline of like, this is the thing I am choosing to put out there as like the true form of my phone number and whatever, like this, I I am uh, establishing that this is like the place to verify. I was thinking about this when you were talking about, you know, what, what, how, how to assert control over information and at least over personal information. I could totally imagine a world where, you know, a- 
Apple yellow pages is a thing where you can assert that like if anyone wants to check what you're like this is my most up-to-date contact information it should not be piecemeal everywhere like it should be connected in one place and that should be able to be verified i have no idea if this pertains to like the blockchain conversation that you're talking about which i think is much more about like more nebulously it's it, like a more complex system of information versus like this to, which to me feels more elemental but i don't it, there, there's something about that of like when you when you describe the the origin of things which is ultimately mm-hmm. like what a lot of this like what what's really hard is checking the sources of stuff and mm-hmm. and first maybe it's easy to to easier to start with information that we can be like all right well this is like a true thing and as the person who lives in this place i can tell you that this is my address does that expand to other things like this is the per- the first person who had this thought and now it has been you know twisted and pushed into the internet wormhole. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, blockchain fundamentally is just a public ledger. You can use it on, right, like, as as a lot of the sort of excitement in the origins of blockchain and where it's getting used, you know, beginning to get used sort of quietly in uninteresting ways is in, like, supply chain channels, right? Like, can you track uh, an object from, like, harvesting to manufacture to production to delivery right like knowing the temperature in a particular like container on a train that eggs were at through the entire sort of transportation from like a an egg farm to the grocery store right yeah but right like the point of that is that yes the origin of that information is known but also unknown like unknown by design and i think like part of the thing that i'm wondering is like there may also be a use case for very much known information yeah no i i think the the yeah the point i was making is you can use it for almost anything like yeah Yeah. you could have like yeah and we have things like that that exist right like there are websites like postable that let you like share your address and your birth date and things like that so that you can remember people's birthdays and send them things so like whether mail or e-letters or things like that you know we had there are points where we had like um about dot me pages <laughs> earlier in web 2.0 where it was just like here's all my links and you know and and those sites have continued link tree is like a more recent but like how random that. is that like that's not a thing maybe maybe it was before its time but like that's not a thing that everyone universally no of course does. yeah <laughs> yeah and, and i think you know the the thing to think about this is right like weren't false information right is not like a new thing right there was <laughs> before the internet like it gossip and like this the uh, dissemination of information among people was always sort of like porous and like fallible, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's just like the game of telephone, like slowly details mutate over time from mm-hmm. one person to the next and become, you know, more extreme or less extreme or completely invented. Mm-hmm. The question is sort of now we're in a situation where the volume of information that is able to disseminate is is sort of like so great that it's near impossible to manage and maintain uh and so like the question of how do you filter and control things um you know like the simplest the the simplest sort of like rugged individualist version of this is like you act as your own filter and it's incumbent on you to make decisions. And, you know, like the in quotes, I did my research, like a uh, type of idea. Like, I, you know, I looked at a few things. I and read it like it's one true. thing. <laughs> yeah. I went to the Wikipedia page and checks out um, versus That's like. That's most of sh- this podcast, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, versus the question of like, should there be systems in place, but then who becomes the arbiter? I think this is why a lot of, um, 
you know, people in like the technology industry and engineers have sort of a libertarian bent because they're within these systems and they're like, yeah, great. Like someone should be determining truth. Who's that person? Like, or I don't know that it should be me. And I definitely don't think it should be the guy I'm sitting next to. Right. Or the woman I'm sitting next to though. They shouldn't. Cause I don't like that. You know, like that's why you wind up in these systems that are sort of like information or like the truth will win out sort of idealism but you know whether or not that is a, actually like a truism and not just a platitude is is like a different question altogether yeah or like whether it is necessary i don't know i think like what i am understanding your thesis t- to potentially also be is that technology could be itself some form of decentralizing force such that people may mm-hmm. like there isn't a puppeteer except for like the system itself. Yeah, it well it's it's you know, I I I like that idea of like technology itself maybe like inherently entropic, like it sort of airs towards entropy unless you're sort of actively creating systems that make it coherent um or or uh eutropic um right like toward like airing towards coherence, but it takes like Right. You know, there's I was reading an article about uh, like the fundamentalism of what a clock is that a bunch of physicists have been like going real deep on like what counts as a clock and what is a clock and going into like thermal entropy and that like clocks are just fundamentally like detectors of entropy. Um, But the idea of like inherently, right, like heat death of the universe, like entropy is sort of like a force in the universe like there are there are people who believe that like the the idea of intelligent life is to sort of be like eutropic and cohering and so these are words i guess we'll see <laughs> i guess we'll see what happens in the next t- 10 years on the internet of where we wind up right do we sort of break down like the coherence that we had started to achieve in like the mass media age, which maybe was too coherent and, and too sort of rigid and singular a version of the truth? Or do we just like, you know, go <laughs> all the way wild, wild west? What is information? Jess, but- would you like to, to take us to a wrap-up corner? No, <laughs> How do you I would feel not. About no, that? I would not like to do that. I will, I will say uh, thank you for sufficiently throwing me out of my depths. Uh, sorry, it's hard to keep up with Joey's Nerd Corner, but I do love it. And everyone should read some Neil Stevenson books is what I'm getting. Yeah, if if you're interested in, in quotes, Baroque speculative fiction. Oh my God. You should this definitely such read niche. Neil Stevenson. This, this episode should He's have so some good. kind of warning <laughs> of so- nicheness. <laughs> He's so good, but I will also say that it is probably, like, a particular flavor of, like, particular nerddom. And if you exist in that world, you love him. (laughs) And if not, maybe he's not your thing. So the book I was talking about is called Fall. I don't think it's his best book. If you want his best book, email. I'll I'll, I'll let you know. If you want his best book, reach out. Talk to Joey. He's, He's your guy. Critical Nonsense is a Sylvain production. Brought to you by all of the genres that I immediately forgot just then. <laughs> Neil Stevenson covers. Cyberpunk post, post internet. Neil's, Neil Stevenson is credited with the term metaverse from the book Snow Crash, actually. Wow, so. fun fact. Good for you, yeah. Mr. Stevenson. Um, as always, we'd like to thank you, Jess, executive producer and nerd fence sitter. One foot in, one foot out. I'll pick the nerd I want to be. We'd also like to thank sound engineer and cyberpunk of our hearts, Alex Contel. We'd like to thank our programming coordinator and digital genius, Les Jacobs. And we have to thank our production help, 8.0, Sara Gilbert and Norm Mastrich. And as always, thanks, Helen. Thank you. 
Special thanks to, I guess, Neil Stevenson. I don't know. I will. <laughs> this is just a Neil Stevenson episode. Special thanks to nerds everywhere. I think both you and I in today are experiencing full out nerddom. So here's nerd, to nerd appreciation. That's right. Here's to nerds. Here's to nerds. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>